this YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. So Isaac Newton talked about the how everything gets going. Yes, things orbit the sun. Yes, they orbit in ellipses. But how? Why? What's doing the pulling and the pushing? And so Newton is famous for a number of laws as well. His first being, an object at wet rest will remain at rest unless acted on by an outside force. An object at rest will remain at rest unless acted on by an outside force. Just like the demo we did in class. Pretty impressive. You say to yourself, there's not much to that. What's he talking about? Okay? In fact, there's a corollary to this that says an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted on by an outside force. You say, yeah, of course. But the key is this. In 1687, when Newton publishes his work, the word force existed, but we weren't using it in this way. He's defining what forces do. Forces take things at rest and move them. They take things in motion and change that motion whether it be speed or direction. He followed on to recognize with his second law that if you apply a force to something of a given mass, it will produce an acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. And he recognized, of course, that gravity is one of those forces. Gravity acts on mass and produces an acceleration. What is an acceleration? An acceleration is a change in speed or direction. A car driving down the road going from 0 to 60 is accelerating. A car going from 60 to 0 is accelerating in a negative direction, as we talked about in class. And a car going 60 miles an hour around a turn and not changing its speed, but changing its direction, yes, there too is an acceleration. Think about things sitting on the dashboard as you take that turn, and they might go sliding off. There's a force there. Force equals mass times acceleration. What is mass? Mass is literally how much material there is. Can't think of a better and simpler definition. A certain amount of material there is. It's not weight. Weight is a force created by the acceleration due to gravity. You stand on that scale and your weight registers a certain amount. Take that same scale up to the moon, and you're way less, but have you changed the mass? Not at all. In fact, earlier in the term we suggested that one kilogram of mass equals 2.2 pounds of weight. Strictly speaking, that's not always true. It's only true where? On the surface of the Earth, somewhere close to sea level. In fact, you get up to the top of Mount Everest, one kilogram weighs about 2.1 pounds. Get out to Mars, one kilogram weighs one pound. On the moon, one kilogram weighs somewhere around a third of a pound. On the space station, one kilogram weighs nothing. There is no acceleration due to gravity that can be registered. So mass doesn't change depending on where you're at. Acceleration due to gravity does. Lastly, Newton adds, for every action, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For a reaction, there is an equal and opposite reaction. You push on something, it's going to push back on you. We don't even realize how often we can use this example. Think about how you walk. You want to walk in this direction? What direction do you push? That way. What's happening here? What happens is you push in this direction, the floor produces an equal and opposite force in the other direction, and you move forward. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Now this is really important in places like space. There's nothing to push on in space. Yet, how does a rocket produce acceleration? How is there a force applied to the rocket? Answer? Throw something out the back of the rocket, 
you accelerate it in one direction, it's going to accelerate you in the other. In the case of modern rockets, we accelerate huge amounts of gas as they explode out the back of the rocket engine, the engine bell, boom, and it pushes the rocket in the other direction. You could just as well throw anything out the back of a rocket, it will produce some form of acceleration. Modern rockets use propellant. There are rockets that we've started to build that use ions, charged particles that are directed by magnetic fields. These are ion drives. Solar sails to push rockets across. There are lots of opportunities there to provide a force. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Think about in your own life how many different times that that law is applied where we don't even give it any thought. So the crowning achievement of all this is to explain why the planets are doing what they're doing. Not just that they're orbiting the sun, but why they're doing what they're doing. And probably the classic example of any sort of application of the scientific method in a new theory is to test it on an unknown problem. That comes up in 1781, long after Newton has died. In 1781, a new object is found to be orbiting the sun. That's the planet Uranus. The planet Uranus has an odd orbit. It looks like it's getting tugged by something. Astronomers study the orbit of Uranus for decades, apply Newton's laws of forces, and recognize that there must be another planet out behind Uranus. That planet is the planet Neptune, discovered in 1846 as a result of an application of Newton's laws. What we're going to discuss next is now that we've got a handle on where things sit in the solar system, how things orbit, what forces are pulling on them, we're going to talk a little bit about how we gather information. And the best way to do that is to make use of light. Now we've talked about the speed of light earlier in the discussions. What we're going to do now is talk about what is the nature of light and what makes different types of light different.